we'll continue with this discussion later in the discussion part and I will pass on the word to Jaime now to introduce the next speaker. Okay, so now it's my great pleasure to introduce Joseph Raylan Virai from uh, Philippines. Uh, where are you, Joseph? Let no, me no, bring you in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jaime. Thanks. Uh, my greetings to all, uh, especially to the organizers of this forum, Jaime. Evi and Stefan and Jan uh, for this forum. Uh, my short talk today would only be a simple uh, review of the latest edition of Post-Human Studies Reader edited by Evi and Jan, uh, which was released this year. Uh, within my review, I will intersperse and scatter my own thoughts about post-trans meta-humanism current. Uh, the book, uh, I think, gives the impression that uh, posthumanism has a dynamic and uh, complex characters. I deduce from my reading that posthumanism autonomously evolves, expands, and moves to multifaceted directions, while it points to uh, complex theoretical anchors and roots. Here, Deleuze and Guattari's popularized term rhizome may find applicability. Uh, posthumanism is a rhizome, I think. Uh, with Evi and Jan's genius, they were able to eloquently show the interweaving and disentangling features of these rhizomatic post-trans meta-peculiarities in a manner that is uh, less perplexing. Well, uh, posthumanism is becoming more and more confusing because of the rapid technological changes as well as uh, onto and epistemological theorizations. Uh, the interaction between humans and technology holds posthumanism hostage. This is the reason why uh, philosophers and scholars are constantly challenged to push their limits to cope up with the uh, any calibration and recalibration that uh, open occur. Uh, Evi and Jan made it clear that uh, posthumanism is a tradition that foregrounds non-anthropocentric attitudes and approaches. Uh, they did not confine posthumanism in specific periodized boundaries. In fact, they went back uh, to various markers of posthumanism by making a cursory review of Western philosophy. And uh, that is a, a very good uh, presentation because they were able to identify seeds of posthuman discourse from ancient time all the way down to a uh, contemporary period. They identified the following, uh, Anaximander's idea of predominance of nature over humanity, Heraclitus' discourse on becoming, Epicurus' claim of superiority uh, of technology over human nature, Espinosa's singularity treatise, uh, and many others. Uh, they were even, uh, they even included Russian cosmists, especially uh, Fyodorovich, uh, war against death through scientific methods. And of course, <coughs> Charles Darwin's evolutionary theory. Uh, uh, Evi and Jan also uh, saw indications of post-human character in the ideas of Martin Heidegger, Jürgen Habermas, and even Bertrand Russell. Uh, but all this, uh, from among all these thinkers, uh, Nietzsche and his concept of U Uberman or Uberman over human at least from their uh, point of view, inaugurated the trans and uh, post-meta-humanism uh, in the uh, Western history of philosophy. So let us start with how uh, transhumanism was defined in the uh, presentation of Evi and Jan. Uh, Huxley used the term transhumanism to uh, refer to the uh, continuous improvement of the human condition, either through social and uh, cultural change. Uh, that is uh, natural or technologically mediated uh, evolution. Uh, for Huxley, the uh, human being is dominant over nature, meaning he is part of the uh, universal process of evolution. And uh, while the evolution is going on, going on the human being is self-conscious about uh, this process of transformation towards uh, the realization of his uh, highest possibilities. 
by being aware of this essential duty in the enduring process of becoming, a uh, man becomes unafraid of his own insignificance and even uh, unafraid of his own ev eventual demise. Uh, this was uh, emphasized uh, by Vita More, and Vita More uh, emphasized that the human being's importance in the process of evolution and in the process of becoming. Uh, this was uh, supported by... Uh, this was supported by uh, other thinkers, uh, uh, particularly emphasizing the uh, spirit of transhumanism as being anchored on morphological freedom. Um, the individual, uh, um, meaning the individual can uh, freely dissociate himself or themselves from religious and political ideas that may hamper their ultimate human potentials. Uh, Anders Sandberg supported this uh, morphological freedom idea of uh, Vita More, and uh, um, he also presupposed uh, self-definition and a will to change. Uh, well, uh, Espandiri or FM2030 also uh, define or... Uh, try to define transhumanism as presented by Evie and Jan. Uh, and his take was that transhumanism is grounded on the uh, 20th century development of science and space technology. Uh, he claimed that these developments prove that there is no limit to a human being's growth. Uh, for instance, human beings, for instance, human beings can go and extend beyond space and time as much as they can deflesh and de-animalize many areas of their anatomies. Uh, Sorgner's article on Nietzsche and Uberman was focused on the convergence of the concept of Nietzsche, uh, Nietzsche's Uberman and the concept of poshuman. Uh, he observed the uh, similarity between the Uberman of Nietzsche and the concept of poshuman of FM 2030. Meaning, uh, both Espendiary and Nietzsche believe that the human species uh, may give birth to a transhuman or overhuman. Uh, some ideas of transhumanist thinkers uh, uh, froze uh, Francis Fukuyama with fear. <laughs> uh, Fukuyama regarded transhumanism as the most uh, dangerous idea in the world. Uh, he was actually concerned about its effect on political equality. And uh, Fukuyama thinks that transhumanist project of modifying human essence would uh, uh, ultimately deface humanity. Jan and Evi made sure that these concerns about uh, equality would be immediately addressed. So uh, uh, perhaps this is the reason why they placed James Huge work right after Fukuyama's. Uh, transhumanist... Uh, uh, huge, uh, huge uh, democratic uh, transhumanism uh, deals with political issues pertaining to the ethics and values of transhumanism. I am very concerned about this because uh, later I would uh, uh, try to say that uh, in a third world or developing country such as the country, this is a very, a very, uh, this is a priority of our concerns. It should be noted that uh, democratic transhumanism is rooted on the same principles of democracy found in the Enlightenment. A huge stress that technologies do not determine power relations, but merely cultivate new terrains for struggle. Uh, technologies, meaning to say, have ambivalent tendencies. Huge asserted that new technologies will give rise to new forms of oppression and exploitation just they, as they open uh, new opportunities for liberty and equality. Uh, uh, the second part of the collection, which is posthumanism, uh, uh, concentrated much on how uh, uh, posthumanism developed over time. Uh, the part was carefully uh, organized by uh, the editors and it uh, it was actually, when you are reading it, it's, uh, it's it fluidly flowing, so it is less confusing. So uh, that's why I am very impressed how the uh, editors organize it. Uh, Neil Badmington identified some theoretical currents where the anti-humanism could be traced. Uh, Badmington uh, identified, among others, the following as seeds of post-humanism. 
German ideology, particularly uh, the works and ideas of Marx and Engels, uh, which made theoretical anti-humanism possible. And then the waning humanism in the works of Sigmund Freud, as man loses his space, place at the center of things. Lacan's attack against the humanist tradition, uh, Haraway's cyborg concept that uh, emphasizes the crisis of humanism, uh, Foucault and Althusser uh, as they oppose traditional humanism, and of course, uh, uh, this anti-humanist uh, theorizations refine what it means to be post-humanist. However, uh, confusions and misconceptions among scholars were observed uh, the post in the post-humanism was taken as a campaign to end humanity and hence extremely dangerous. This is the point where Hales started her clarification. Uh, contrary to the uh, misconception that arose from Foucault and Althusser, Althusser's anti-humanist stand, Hales argued that post-humanism is not the end of the human. She believed that the human uh, remains in post-humanism. This is because the human is a being that is essentially an embodied being. And part of this embodiment is uh, human's uh, awareness uh, separate from that of the cybernetic machines. Donna Haraway agreed on this and uh, he con she conceptualized the cyborg, which combines the human organism and the cybernetic machine. Um, the third would be uh, the central idea around which theorizations, uh, which posthumanism theorization and observations of writers like Karen, uh, Karen Barad, Hassan, uh, is that they revolve around uh, what we call performativity. Uh, Hassan first introduced perform performativity in the posthuman discourse. He claimed that the cosmos is performance. Uh, Post-humanist culture is a performance in progress. Uh, Karan and Barad later expanded uh, Hassan concept of performativity in an ontological manner. Uh, of course, uh, the last part, uh, the last uh, part and equally important part of the uh, collection would be uh, uh, the metahumanism. Uh, the brilliant collaboration of Stefan Sorgner and Jaime Del Valle was prominent in this part. In the Meta-Humanist uh, Met Manifesto, Sorgner and Del Val define meta-humanism as the critic uh, of humanism's foundational premises, such as the free will, autonomy, uh, and superiority of the anthropoid due to their rationality. Uh, it deepens the view, according to Del Val and uh, Sorgner, it deepens the view of the body as a field of relational forces in motion and of reality as eminent embodied process of becoming, which does not necessarily end up in defined forms or identities, but may unfold into endless amorphogenesis. Uh, Jaime Del Val interrogated the uh, overall uh, foundations of transhumanism and posthumanism. Uh, Del Val's article among others, stress that the meta-human is post-human post because, according to him, it transcends both the idealism of transhumanism and the materialism of a post-humanist critic. In Del Val, as well as in uh, Sorgner, the meta-human is uh, neither a stable reality nor a utopia but it's actually an open set of strategies and movements in the present. Uh, finally, uh, metahumanism, according to the presentations or collection, uh, is grounded on the arguments, uh, grounded on the following concepts rather. Number one, there is what we call relationality of bodies, the unquantifiability and open field of relational bodies or metabodies, politics of movement, pluralism, emanticism, emergent ontology, and etc. So, uh, uh, Sorgner in his adage of metahumanism compared metahumanism to a philosophical poem packed with metaphors. I think uh, the collection uh, is a best uh, uh, reference for a, a starting uh, post-human scholar.